first on Guam. KUM News Headlines are presented by Calvo's Insurance, protecting Micronesia for 85 years. Matson and the Adahi Itano program. Apply at matson.com. Cars Plus, Guam's automotive leader in sustainability and electric vehicles. Learn more at carsplusguam.com. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on KUAM News Primetime, local and federal authorities are investigating an oil spill happening overnight in the Hagatnya Marina. GWA has new federal rules to follow to reduce exposure of PFAS in our drinking water. What's the cost of clean and safe water and how will it impact our water bill? I'm Mitsuki Hirayama with a report. The hotel industry is in survival mode. I'm Tomas Manglonia with a full report from the CNMI sitting down with industry leaders about the future of the tourism industry. Half a day, good evening. Welcome to KUAM News Primetime. I'm Nick Delgado. And I'm Destiny Cruz. Thank you so much for making this a part of your day. Well, local and federal officials are looking into an oil spill at the Hagatnya Marina. The U.S. Coast Guard and Guam Environmental investigating the source of the underwater oil spill and how much oil was actually flowed into the marina. The Port Authority of Guam confirming it happened Monday around 10.30 p.m. The spill was reported as a private contractor was doing construction at the Guam Fisherman's Co-op property. Officials say the contractor was excavating and dredging the rocks behind the co-op at the time. Late this afternoon, the Coast Guard told KUAM that Unitech had removed 100 gallons of oily water mixture prior to the arrival, their arrival on scene. Officials at Unitech tested and confirmed it is a petroleum product. Well, as federal officials raise the alarm on PFAS with new nationwide water standards to reduce exposure from the so-called forever chemical, water service providers now have five years to come into compliance, including Guam. How much will it cost for Guam Water Works Authority to meet those standards, and will it impact your water bill? Mitsuki Iriyama with the answers. PFAS are man-made chemicals used to make a variety of products like non-stick cookware, stain-resistant clothes, and firefighting foam. This so-called forever chemical is harmful to health and environment. Traces of it are found in air, soil, and water across the nation, including Guam. PFAS is the dominant issue of the day if you're in the water, in water business. It's, it's throughout the United States. So the same trillions of dollars is going to have to be spent by all of uh, American uh, water utilities to treat the PFAS. To prevent thousands of deaths and illnesses, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency is requiring public water utilities to test and treat six PFAS chemicals in drinking water within a five-year time frame. Consolidated Commission on Utilities member Simon Santa says it will cost Guam Water Works Authority about $100 million to treat PFAS in our contaminated water well. We have a plan. Uh, where it, it'll approach uh, $100 million. It could approach $100 million over the next five or six years. It's about 10, 11 percent of our total capital improvement plan that we're considering and really moving on at, at GWA. He adds in the next five to eight years, rate payers could be seeing an estimated 90 percent increase in their water bill. But we are working with the legislature, and about assisting us with a type of financing that we could use that would reduce that rate increase by about a third. But the bottom line, Sanchez says, there still needs to be investment in our water system. It's the cost of clean and safe water that must be bared. Mitsuki Hirayama, KUAM News. Thanks, Suki. Well, touted as Guam's premier law enforcement agency, is the Guam Police Department receiving stellar reviews when it comes to making villages feel safe? Some mayors sound off on the lack of patrol cars and visibility in the neighborhoods. Joan Gancharfris reports. This is a big concern, you know, uh, between uh, the village of Dedido and Jigo, you know, with the Dedido precinct, you know. They got a lot of ground to cover. I feel for the guys over there, you know. Um, with the shortage of cars, you know, on the ground that we have to cover here. Dedido Vice Mayor Peter Benaventi referring to the shortage of Guam Police Department patrol vehicles. 
testimonying to Mon Harmon Mayor Louise Rivera sharing the same sentiment. It's very concerning, especially with our Guam Police Department, because they respond to many of our emergencies, you know, um, so many different things going on around the community. Last week, KUAM reported the alarming numbers obtained through a FOIA request. Among the four police precincts in Sinahanya, Hoggett, Tumon, and Dededo, it was listed that only 20 patrol vehicles were working out of 60 cars. As of Monday, there were only three patrol cars in Hoggett and Tumon, five in Dededo and Sinahanya. Benaventi recalling one evening he was patrolling through the village and he came across an officer from the Dededo precinct. I was asking him, you know, casually, he said, my brother, how many on duty right now? And he's like, with the lack of vehicles, the lack of manpower, you know, it, it really hurts, you know. Um, we get calls here at the office on our phones that, um, you know, GPD's not responding. They say, Vice Mayor, um, you know, we got a situation over here, you know. Of course, it's in, you know, dire emergency. We tell them to call 911. Both Rivera and Benaventi say their villages have been amazingly proactive in helping deter criminal activity in due part to active community group chats on WhatsApp. Neighbors, watching neighbors, helping out each other, you know, be on the lookout. If GPD can't respond, a lot of times, you know, it's just us here, my vice mayor, um, our, our staff here at the mayor's office that would go out and respond to things. And although many requests for more patrolling are made from the mayors. If GPD is not able to, you know, um, of course, we'd like to know all the We can keep our community informed. Jonah Charfris, KM News. We'll be right back. My late husband, Eddie De La Cruz, was a member of U.S. guerrilla during World War II. Years ago, Congress passed legislation to provide veteran benefit. Eddie's wish was to ensure that I receive survivor benefits. I attempted to, to seek help from federal offices and con congressional representatives and got nowhere. I met with the office of Congressman James Moylan and now we are seeing movement on my survivor's benefits. For veterans issues, please contact my office at 671-922-6673. Thank you, Office of Congressman Moylan. Rooted in the community since 1995, Kmart is here to serve you 24 hours a day. From essentials to fill your pantry to delightful treats, our selection of groceries have everything you need to stock your kitchen with love. Step directly into style with the latest fashion finds in shoes and clothing for the family at unbeatable prices. Turn your living space into a dream home with our unparalleled selection of home goods. Illuminate your shopping experience and brighten your budget every week with our blue light specials. These specials are a testament to our commitment to offering the biggest variety for the best value. Discover a world where quality and savings meets convenience. Kmart is your one-stop shop where every visit is an adventure. Shop smart and save big at Kmart, your Guam shopping destination. Welcome back to Primetime. Major hotels in the Northern Marianas have been operating with less than half of their rooms being occupied year-round. Well, how long can they stay afloat if things do not improve fast? Regional correspondent Tomas Mangwatnia reports. The state of the Northern Marianas hotel industry is... Is, you know, simply speaking, survival mode. For everybody, you know. The Hotel Association of the Northern Mariana Islands 11 hotel members reported a 38% average occupancy rate in 2023. He said hotels start to make a profit at 80%. If air service remains where it is, with no uh, foreseeable improvement in air seats to be coming in, um, it's pretty, pretty uh, sure that uh, hotel properties on the island will have to take drastic measures. He said the industry is slowly bleeding as operating and maintaining buildings are costly. 
He said that the last time they saw numbers reach the 80% threshold was in 2019, and that was in the aftermath of Typhoon Yutu and before the pandemic. The numbers have shaken every sector of the community. When you have hotels at 34% occupancy year-round, the wholesalers selling the pork belly, the lobster tails, the this, the that, uh, they're not taking orders. So the containers arriving at the port is down. That also affects the coffers. Currently, South Korea dominates the market. They admit there needs to be at least three vibrant source markets to cushion the NMI's fall. But there is hope with the return of Hong Kong Airlines later this month. Not one property is, is, is feasting year-round. And so everybody's fielding losses. So it's very difficult to answer that question of what happens next because it's really about uh, the owners of these hotels and their appetite to continue shoveling out cash losses. Tomas Manglanya, KUAM News, Saipan. The Guam Department of Education may have just finished its community input briefings, but residents are still speaking up about its plans to right size. KUAM getting the pulse of the community as conversations on the matter continue. Have you heard that the Guam Department of Education plans to right size or decommission certain school campuses? Really? Yeah. No, I have not really. I didn't hear about that. It's a similar feeling of being left in the dark shared by stakeholders during GDOE's initial community input briefing on the matter with the Southern Region last week. Some attributing low attendance and minimal feedback to poor notification about their chance to voice their concerns. I should know and I will be attending uh, meetings because I am very concerned with, with my kids. Others like Enzo Torini echoing a lack of confidence in GDOE's ability to maintain campuses post decommission should they need to reopen. I don't think it's the solution. Still conversations on the matter are continuing this week. Meantime, internal work is also underway. A GDOE committee is also visiting each school, taking into consideration community input and utilizing factors to produce a report with recommendations to the superintendent. Now for a look at your world at home. Here's a view of the sun setting in Finesisu on Saipan. Troy Palamalu Safety, a.k.a. The Quiet Storm. Troy's seen more out of the corners of his cold steel eyes than most mortal men have seen straight on. The last thing an offense would witness? A fury of flowing mane incoming at high speed. Hey! Cat-like quickness and supernatural instincts like Troy's only come once in a lifetime. And oh, how grateful we are that they came in ours. No one made the beloved burg of Pittsburgh feel quite as safe as this safety. The Hyundai Tucson with advanced safety and tech because even safeties could use a little more safety themselves. Our new McDonald's Spicy Chicken McNuggets are just the right amount of spicy. A small to medium Sprite kind of spicy. Uh, let's get a McFlurry after this kind of spicy. But if you get the mighty hot sauce, it's a napkins up for foreheads now kind of spicy. Uh, this came from McDonald's kind of spicy? Because our spicy chicken McNuggets breaded in tempura and made with cayenne are just the right amount of spicy. Unless you remember what I said about the sauce. ba da ba ba, -ba. On Guam, the Sharoma name is synonymous with sports excellence. Tradition, rivalries, dominance, and community service are a few of the characteristics of the family's legacy. And the youngest star in that proud lineage is Stussy, a senior at Father Duenas. You no, know, Sharoma is not really a golf name. It's more of a football. We come from a football family. So to bring that name to golf is pretty cool. 
His great-grandfather is the legendary Hal Shiroma, after whom the Dedido football field is named. His grandpa is the equally storied coach Ivan. Tim, his dad, was a standout athlete himself. And Stussy carries on that four-generation deep tradition. I think all around, I'm an all-around player. Nice. Yeah. Is there is there any uh, golfer's game that you look up to or you kind of like model your own game after you watch him a lot? I mean, Tiger's, Tiger's mindset, yeah. Never quit. While he's continued his family's namesake by finding great success on the gridiron and in jiu-jitsu, he's made his own way by being an elite talent on the fairway. He says his background between contact team sports and the controlled isolation on the greens is a night and day difference, and they've also helped his game in the way he prepares and executes his game plan. It's a lot different um, mentally. It's a big mental game. Uh, you got to be calm, collected. I know how to work hard and not give up, and I know how to win. He's well aware of the history his family has made on the island, and it's a gift he lives up to any time he hits the course. I mean, it means a lot. It's a lot of pressure, too, because when I hear the stories about my grandpa and them, it's always good. Not a lot of bad things to be said, and uh, I'm just glad I get to carry on the legacy. As a member of our national golf team, he also wears our island's colors with pride. It means a lot, honestly. Uh, we're so small out here. No one really knows about us. And when we get, when I get to go out to the states and other places to compete and represent Guam, introduce everyone to Guam and let them know where I'm from, I'm, pr I'm very proud of that. Cool. I want to play at the collegiate level, and if if I could take my game to the next level after college, that'd be awesome. House to Home, presented by Remax Diamond Realty. By the way, the three of us were celebrating our nine-year anniversary. Woohoo! Yes. Oh my God, Jason! And you know what? They, you know what they say. Whenever you make a friend, and if you hit like seven or more years, it's set for life. So we're 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 friends yeah, forever. We're set for life. But I can't believe it's, that time has really gone fast. Really, but in terms of going to, in terms of going back to the houses. Um, there may be features, but bear in mind also, it's an opinion of value and we use yes. our comparables to come up with that. It, the, if, if a seller says, well, I want 900,000, but we've given them a comparable of 700,000, then that the chances of that property sitting on the market may sit even longer. So we will definitely educate the seller, but sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But if they listen to their realtor, they'll find that they can move the property probably quicker than um, setting a higher price point than what the market will bear. So listen to the experts and, and you'll get somewhere when you do that. Um, and again, talking about pricing, it's based on also an appraisal. So if a person is buying the property, a purchase document that will come in will say it is subject to appraisal. Now, Gina and I, our opinions would be based on what we find. But let's say a month later, an appraiser comes in, he might come up with um, somewhat of a different value. So, but we're, I think historically, we've always been close we've really uh, sharpened our pencils to check on market values. House to Home, presented by Remax Diamond Realty. Weekly Renewal is brought to you by Calvo Select Care. Half a day, I'm Claire Calvo, bringing you your weekly renewal. Well, April is Earth Month, and this is the time to celebrate our planet and to unify and come together in efforts to protect our planet. So who better to have here than Regine Bisco Lee? Oh, Welcome, Regine. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. So we were just talking a little bit about the many different things that you're involved with, but I want to start first. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Guam Green Growth is an initiative uh, that was started actually several years ago. Um, it was born out of the University of Guam Center for Island Sustainability. And they've really done an incredible job of expanding, not just here on Guam. Um, they're very committed to the Un United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So we've done a lot here on Guam, but also branching out now to other islands in Micronesia. Um, the CNMI just launched their Green Growth Initiative, 
as well as Palau. Oh, so can I can I ask you this because I know a lot of people when I have this discussion, there's a question of okay, when we hear of coral bleaching, how does that exactly happen? What you know? Can you just give a simple answer? It's a very simplistic answer. So you know, there's we always like exactly what you were describing. We see our very diverse, beautiful vibrant coral reefs, you know, where, and it's a habitat for so many other kinds of marine life. Mm -hmm. um, when you have this increase in temperature, it really, it doesn't allow the coral to live and it, you know, corals die off and then it, all of the ecosystem and all of the marine life that once were attracted to the coral and that was their home, right. they're not able to live there anymore. Also, some sediment issues that you know come. And there's sediment, and then also the crown of uh, crown of thorn starfish that has been kind of an invasive hmm. um, species and taken over coral reefs. So I think that's another really important aspect of Guam green growth is getting the awareness out there to our community, and making sure that you know we're we're all aware of these right. impacts that we do as individuals who are just you know out there ocean recreation or whether it's businesses that, mm -hmm. you know, whether they're tourist operators or whatever the case is. Right. Thank you so much, Regine. Is there anything else you'd like to share? No, I just really appreciate KUAM for giving us this platform and encourage everybody to check them out on social media and figure out how you can get involved. And we appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. And thank you all. I'll see you next time on Weekly Renewal. Weekly Renewal is brought to you by Calvo Select Care. Chastity Harney never expected her home could put her at risk for lung cancer. She was diagnosed with stage four disease six years ago. I just kept saying how and why and my kids, that's the only thing I can think of. She was 40 years old, healthy and never smoked. Doctors spoke to her about exposure to radon, a colorless, odorless, radioactive gas. So Harney had her home tested. Anything four and below is normal, and mine was eight, so it was doubled. Radon comes from radioactive decay of uranium and is found in rocks and soil. It causes over 20,000 lung cancer deaths each year, yet three-quarters of Americans have not tested their homes, according to a new survey from the Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center and more than half are not concerned about exposure. It's important to be aware of this, to detect it in your house. Non-smoking lung cancers are on the rise. Dr. David Carbone says this is likely linked to long-term exposure to radon, which can cause gene mutations leading to cancer. The risk the intensity at a given point in time, but the duration of time. Many schools are not tested for radon, many businesses Harney had surgeries, chemotherapy, and radiation. Tests showed her mutation could be treated with a targeted therapy. I want others to know that anybody with lungs can get lung cancer. This is not a smoker's disease anymore. She says every place should be checked for radon yearly because it could save lives. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. Don't need to work, but keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replace, and I'll be around. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. At Not Howie says Taco Bell only really hits after midnight, which is why I'm going to use the Cantina chicken menu to help him see the Taco Bell light. It hits. Hi. <laughs> Are you at Not Howie? The food hits, right? The Cantina chicken crispy taco isn't just for late night. The Cantina chicken quesadilla isn't just for late night because it has a perfect slow roasted chicken to melted cheese ratio. That's chicken on the inside, cheese everywhere else. Introducing the new Cantina chicken quesadilla only at Taco Bell. We start with her and her local business. We start with them celebrating 30 years. We start with Big. Welcome to Dusit's Honey. How am I you today? Keep doing your best. Congratulations. Small and growing businesses.
We start with global connections and make them local. At GTA, we start with your business. Giving Every Tuesday is brought to you by Jay Goodman, a happiness company. The Ilo Ilo International Guam Association held a membership drive at the Sagambasita in Hagat over the weekend. We want to bring them back together, you know, like we used to. And then, um, of course, um, we have a number of goals that we want to um, share our blessings to the people of Guam, to give back to the community. The pandemic impacted their efforts to serve the Guam community. Cecil Cerneo says the association is focused on growing membership and helping others to include Feed the Homeless, donate to Guam Cancer Center and American Red Cross, and establish an Ilo Ilo International Guam Scholarship Foundation to benefit local students. To give back to the community. Um, as you know, there are thousands and thousands of uh, Ilongos in, in Guam. Um, starting from the time when our parents came and up to this time and you know we have a lot of um, uh, new migrants that migrated to Guam. She adds you don't have to have a connection to Ilo Ilo to become a member. For me it's um, it's more like I cannot forget where we came from and not only that we have adopted Guam as home and uh, this is home for us. To join their efforts you can find them on Facebook or call Cecil at 671-483-0919. Giving Every Tuesday is brought to you by Jay Goodman, a happiness company. So much happening on Guam and the CNMI. With that being said, it's time for your latest round of News Bites. Well, coming up on Friday, April 26th to Sunday, April 28th, you're invited to the 15th annual Telefofo Banana Festival. Make sure you stop on by the Epan Beach Park on Friday, 5.30 p.m. to 9 p.m., Saturday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., or Sunday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. for food, games, rides, entertainment, and so much more. It's gonna be a great time. Also coming up, Yoji Theater presents The Good Doctor. Dates are April 18th to the 20th and April 25th to the 27th. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. and show starts promptly at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss it. It's at the Yoji Fine Arts Theater. $20 for general, $10 for students, and free for Yoji students. Cash payments only at the door. Now, for more information, you can call 735-2700. And finally, if you are in Saipan, the local girls Marianas presents Happy Earth Day Mini Night Market on April 22nd from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Saipan and NI Leadership Memorial Kiosk at Chalan Kanoa. The whole family is invited for an evening of live music, entertainment, crafts, and local vendors. And of course, in case you miss it all, you can find it on KUAM.com. And that's your latest dose of News Bites. Now to your birthday shout outs. Which you can submit onto the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club on KUAM.com. It's time for your birthday shout outs courtesy of the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy birthday to Zita San Augustine. Happy birthday blessings, love the familia. And happy birthday to Bobby Leon Guerrero. Happy birthday to the queen of our hearts. We pray your day is filled with all the love you deserve and for many more years, a celebration, traveling, home renovations, and color-coordinated everything. Keep smiling. Keep shining, my mama. You deserve everything the world has to offer and more. Thank you for loving us unconditionally through the ups and downs and always reminding us to put lotion and yipik. We're forever grateful for you and blessed to call you mom and grammy. We love you to papa and back. We wish we were there to celebrate you. Love always your babies on Guam, Cali, and Texas. Happy birthday to everyone celebrating their day today. And that's your primetime show. Have a great evening. Half a day. Welcome to another interview. This time we're speaking with another candidate for Guam delegate on the Democratic ticket, and she's current senator. Senator Amanda Shelton, half a day. Half a day, Nick. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. How are we feeling? I'm feeling great. It's been an exciting campaign so far. 
you know, I've done it before on the senatorial trail, but this is a little different. This is one, one, one seat, not one of 15. Yeah. And, you know, the, the pressure is on. I can feel it. And I'm just having a great time meeting the people, getting out as much as I can to talk to as many people as I can and hear from them what their concerns are on the issues. Well, you definitely have the attention of the people as they have already elected you multiple times into office at the legislature. But walk me back down memory lane. Talk to us a little bit about what you did before getting into public office and then the decision to run for Congress. Yes, so I've been a senator now for three terms. And before that, I worked as a congressional staffer for Congresswoman Madeline Berdalio and as a legislative staffer for Senator Dennis Rodriguez as his chief of staff and a legislative policy analyst for several years. So my background has been policy making, has been public service, and I felt that calling for a long time. So stepping into the senatorial position felt like a very natural calling to me. I'm sure you can remember I was one of the youngest ever elected to that position. And I didn't think at that time that, you know, I'd ever be in that position. I always thought like, oh, maybe in a few years, maybe when I'm retired from whatever my job is, how you see people typically go into public office. And that calling came at that moment and I couldn't ignore it because I knew that I needed to serve the people of Guam. And the same thing happened in this moment now. Uh, I had lots of people ask like, why Congress? Why now you're doing a great job as Senator? Mm -hmm. You know, you're going from a for sure thing, one of 15 to just one, you're risking a lot. But I see that that risk is absolutely worth it because we are at a critical moment in Guam's history. And I think that Guam needs respectful, effective, collaborative leadership to move our agenda forward in Washington. And Guam has been my lifelong home. It's really the heartbeat of my identity. Mm -hmm. And it's my shared experience with you, with all of the people of Guam, the listeners tonight, that have shaped my values, that have fueled my commitment to public service. And so that has been my background serving now in the legislature mm -hmm. for the last three terms. And it's really been such an honor and such a privilege to give myself this way to the people of Guam. And of course, it gives me so much fulfillment as well to know that this is my home. This is the place that I want to build up for future generations, mm -hmm. for my hopefully future family and all my godchildren that are going to live here and stay rooted here. Yeah. And, and you, you touched on being one of the youngest when you got into the legislature. Mm -hmm. You, I think you were also, correct me if I'm wrong, among the group of the legislatures, mm -hmm. the group of all the, like the largest women yes. uh, group that was elected into the legislature at one time. So. Yes. So That's I was the youngest at that time <laughs> yeah. elected, but I am also the youngest woman ever to be elected in the legislature. I hope another young lady will come and knock me out of that position sometime soon. Mm -hmm. But yes, we were the ladies lature, there the super majority of women, <laughs> uh, the first in the states. And that was really an honor to be a part under the leadership of Speaker Tina Munya Barnes, mm -hmm. Vice Speaker uh, Talina Nelson, myself as the secretary to be a part of that cohort was really exciting and a great way for me to step into that public service. And you definitely uh, said it correctly when you said the pressure is on because look at the questions and the reactions that you got instantly mm -hmm. when you officially started announcing, I'm running for Congress. Mm -hmm. how, did you, how do you see yourself getting past that, past the pressure and just focus on the issues and, and the campaign? Yes, well, many people ask, even my family asked, why Congress? Mm -hmm. Why now? Do you think this is the right time? And I told them the same thing, that I think this is the right time. This is the moment for me. I know that this is a very, very important moment for Guam. And Guam deserves a delegate who will work tirelessly to fight for the people of Guam, to fight for parity for the people of Guam in Washington, D.C. And so people are asking me, why would you want to leave Guam? And it's not that I want to leave Guam. It just so happens that this job is in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Guam is my home. It is the heartbeat of who I am, my identity. Everything about me is Guam. I am Guam's girl. You know, that's that's who I am. And I can serve Guam the best, my, my best ability, I believe, in this position. So the job just happens to be in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you look at my background, if you look at the work I've done in the legislature over the last three terms, you know, prioritizing services for our veterans, uh, 
helping people who are most in need at the times most in need, whether that was during the pandemic or right after Typhoon Mawar, mm -hmm. or, um, really building up our local workforce capacity for families inside and outside of the base. That has been my background to help people in any way I can. And that's what I'll continue to do if I'm so, so blessed to be able to go into this position as Guam delegate, continue to fight for parity for the people of Guam. I think that's, as the saying goes, you could take the uh, island girl out of the island, but you can never take the, what's the true Oh, for the sure. I'm being an island girl. Yes, <laughs> and I have been so blessed to be able to follow in uh, my parents and my grandparents' generations of service to our island and our people, and to have these examples within my family and surrounding me of people who have cared for others, who have shown me that all of these values that they've taught me in service, uh, in Nathamalik, respect, all of these things that I hold so dear to me, that can all be shared with the wider community. Mm -hmm. And whether that's in public service as a senator, as a congressperson, or if that's in my volunteer work or civic organizations, there is a place for all of that and for us to share that with one another. And so I'm, you know, I feel so blessed to have that kind of backing with me, a family that cares and loves and has taught me patience and understanding yeah. so that I can have that kind of uh, empathy when I talk to the people of Guam and to know that I'm living these challenges along with you. you know, that's what I think makes me able to do this job, that I feel the pain as a young millennial mm -hmm. thinking about housing affordability, thinking about employment, about health care, about social services, about the infrastructure of our island, especially coming out of those six months without stable power and water after Mawar. Yeah. You know, you and I are experiencing these things together as people who are living and working and uh, trying to help our island in this way. And so, you know, all of those experiences, all of that has brought me to this moment to say, yes, I'm ready to stand up and work for Guam in Congress. I will be the voice of every single person on this island because we can't forget that Guam is not just Guam the landmass that we need to harden the infrastructure of, we need to solidify, but Guam is more than that. Mm -hmm. Guam is more than a military base. Guam is more than, uh, more than just the land. It's the 170,000 people who live here, every heart that lives here. And that's really my pledge to the people of Guam going into this campaign, mm -hmm. that I am going to be the voice for every single person who chooses to make Guam home. Well, that's a good setup for your to discuss more on your platform, which we'll get to after the break. Okay. Keep it here. You're watching the interview. Honey, do you want some milk? Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment, and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Welcome back to the interview again. Joining us in studio is the candidate for Guam delegate under the Democratic ticket, Senator Amanda Shelton. Half a day. Half a day, Nick. So thank you for walking us back down memory lane to talk about your years in public service and the years preceding that. But now I want to ask you, what is your platform for Congress? I think what is front and center in everyone's mind is our relationship, our 
uh, role as a national, our island's own defense and national defense uh, strategic place in the world. And the imbalance of power but in our relationship between the United States and the island of Guam. Mm -hmm. And also being a target for our these other nations who look to project power in the Pacific region or who simply want to do harm to the nation. You know, that's very clear to all of us right now. Every time we hear a threat, every time we read something in the news, and these are things that are really front and center in all of our minds. And so, of course, my platform is centered on the military buildup and things surrounding that, as well as infrastructure of our island, mm -hmm. transportation, uh, sustainability, education, health care for the people of Guam. And with all this heavy lifting of geopolitical and national security dealing with our island, I think that we also need to focus on the people part of, of uh, everything that we're doing here, mm -hmm. remembering that it is about the people of Guam, the 170,000 hearts that beat here yeah. and that are really driving me and this campaign. So the focus is there on all of those larger platform issues, big issues in Washington, D.C. I think it's also really focused on uh, the people of Guam and how to help them. So, you know, Nick, in Washington, you can find a study, data, a survey on just about anything yeah. and how members of Congress spend their time is one of these things that there's so much information about. And so it tells us that a member of Congress usually spends 30% or more of their time on constituent services. So this can be anything that a constituent comes to you about with a, an issue regarding the federal government. So that can mean veteran services, military benefits, immigration paperwork, all of these different things, opportunities for the youth. Yeah. And I think a really important role that the delegate and their team plays is making the connection between these federal agencies, federal partners, partners and helping the people of Guam get the things that they, they deserve through these benefits or uh, figure out a system that we don't have so much knowledge about, but the representative, the delegate does have the opportunity to connect us to those things. And I yeah. think that's the part of service that we can't forget in public service, just like we can't forget the people of Guam in Washington, D.C. when we talk about what, what it means uh, all of these big major decisions mean for Guam and putting Guam at the, at the table, making sure that there's a parity for the people of Guam among our fellow citizens in the state, our sister territories who have some of these other mm. benefits, putting Guam at the table, not forgetting Guam the same way that, uh, you know, we will have that personal touch with the people of Guam and uh, being a connection to the federal government for them. No doubt. And as in your current position as Guam Senator, mm -hmm. uh, you pretty much already have a seat at the table, so to speak, when it comes to working with military officials or, or taking tours even of the new bases or, or just uh, corresponding with them about what plans they have in place for bringing the more of the, the Marines and their families here to Guam. How do you think that you might be able to excel that uh, should you uh, become the next delegate? I think that the role of the delegate, you definitely have a different perspective. Yeah. You know, having sat working in the office of the delegate for a few years, I saw that there were many more doors opened to different officials. Of course, you have the opportunity to invite them to Guam to open the conversation to mm -hmm. the public. And I think that's something that is so important. Having that uh, open door communication between the government, between government officials, military officials, and our local leaders here, and the people of Guam here who are being affected by all of this. And so, Having that uh, open line of communication it, for me is a huge priority because I want to make sure that the people of Guam understand what's happening and they're brought along the way, every step of the way in the process. Because there are so many things that are going on that you know sometimes we're late to hear it, hear about things. Yeah. We hear about it once a decision is made, you know, weeks later, months later. Uh, but if we have the opportunity to be an advocate, and Guam deserves that kind of advocate in Washington, to be on top of things, to be there uh, saying, this is what Guam deserves, this is what's due to Guam, mm -hmm. and, and bringing that connection back home to the people for them to be a part of it as well. And on a timely matter, we're not just called where America's day begins, mm -hmm. only to hear things, like you said, 
days or weeks later. So mm -hmm. good point there. And I'm glad you brought up your time in the congressional office working for uh, former Congressman Madeline Berdalio, mm -hmm. which I want to ask you a little bit more about, but we're going to take one more break. Okay. More of the interview in sure. a moment. Cantina Chicken Crispy Taco isn't just a late night taco, it's a seasoned and slow roasted chicken taco that pairs nicely with the new avocado verde salsa at any time. Introducing the new Cantina Chicken Crispy Taco, only at Taco Bell. The Cantina Chicken Burrito isn't just for late night, because it keeps it light with slow roasted shredded chicken and finely shredded purple cabbage in a freshly grilled tortilla that's not shredded. Introducing the new Cantina Chicken Burrito, only at Taco Bell. goes with your flow. Get unlimited local talk, text, and data at the most affordable rate with unlimited flow postpaid. Welcome back to the interview. Again, you're watching us with the, speaking with the next delegate, I should say the next qualified cool delegate candidate, not manifesting it here. <laughs> It's up to the people to decide that. Of course, thank you so much, Senator Amanda Shelton, for joining us. Thank you, Nick. Yes, and I'm manifesting it. <laughs> <laughs> and so you had mentioned your time at working for former, former Congresswoman Madeline Bergaglio. Have you spoken to her about this? Yes, I did let her know very early on my intentions to run. Of course, she was excited for me. She's seen my progression, mm -hmm. you know, in public service. And she was very supportive of me when I ran for senator. And she continues to be supportive now. And she's one of those bosses. And something great that I learned from her is to always you know, allow your people to grow and to pursue new things where where they can continue to help. And so that's something she encouraged me to do as a senatorial candidate yeah. when I was working for her. And I, you know, I really felt that excitement and support from her when I spoke to her. What a great balance from the other from hearing from the other side when people question your decision to even run for public office, let alone move from being in the Senate to Congress. Mm -hmm. um, so good that you have that there. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the goals should you excel and, and fill the role in D.C.? What are some of your immediate goals? I would say first order of business even. A oh, first order of business if I were to win. <laughs> wow, that's, you know, that's so exciting to think about. Right? The first thing I would do absolutely is to thank God and to thank the people of Guam for putting their trust and their confidence in me, the platform that I'm presenting, the agenda that I want to carry out as their delegate to Congress. I think mm -hmm. that's most important to show my gratitude. And of course, I would contact our delegate, Jim Moylan, mm -hmm. because we are friends. We served in the 35th and 36th Guam legislatures. We've worked very well together. Keeping those connections. Yeah, absolutely. And I would talk to him so that we can ensure a smooth transition uh, between our offices to make sure that there's no interruption in service to the people of Guam. I think that's super mm -hmm. important. And then I will, you know, really compile all of the information, all of the concerns and the suggestions that I heard along the way on the campaign trail, because there have been so many people that I've met from our island leaders, military leaders, business people, Manamku, our Menhoban, mm -hmm. everyone who has something to share and their voices are so important. And as I am pledging to be a voice for all of these people on Guam, I wanna put all of those concerns and suggestions together to help drive uh, you know, a very short term in Congress. It's only mm -hmm. two years, just right. like a senatorial seat here. There's so much work to do, but I'll take all of those suggestions into consideration. And lastly, I'll reach out to my networks, my uh, networks nationally and internationally. I've had such a splendid time over the last six years mm -hmm. as a senator making these professional and personal connections with different groups, such as the Blue Planet Alliance, the uh, Council of State Governments, the National Council of State Legislatures, the Toll Fellows, all of these folks who have great connections throughout the states, throughout the world, mm -hmm. let them know of my new position advocating for Guam and ask them to come along and to be uh, just as big supporters of Guam and ask them for their suggestions of hopefully people who can support uh, Team Guam and uh, be part of that effort to have the best rep representation from Guam delegates office. Nice. 
Well, I guess you cross that bridge when you yes. potentially get there. <laughs> yes. Um, what challenges do you foresee in running this campaign in Congress and still balancing what you need to do for the people in your current capacity? Well, one great thing about being in an elected position right now, serving as a senator and uh, running for Congress, is that I really do have the pulse of the people. Mm -hmm. I have my ear to the ground. I'm meeting people left and right at every event in the legislature, in public hearings, listening to these concerns. Mm -hmm. So to me, every federal issue is a local issue, and there's an opportunity to advocate for Guam at every level of government. And so having that uh, pulse of the people is really important and I think such an advantage to me that I'm very grateful for. Uh, there, there is of course the juggling of the schedule and yeah. being super, super busy, uh, but that's not something that I ever complain about because I feel like when you have the opportunity to reach out and to meet people and to talk to them and to listen to them, that is when you are learning the most, that is when you're able to do the best job because you work for the people. You're there to listen to their concerns and their concerns and their ideas should be what is driving you. That is what has driven most of the legislation that I put forth in the legislature. It's responding to people's needs and concerns, mm -hmm. listening to them. You know, that's why we have this public hearing process, right. this committee process so that people come along with us the entire time that we listen to the people of Guam. That's why we're the people's house. And so having that opportunity to listen, to learn, uh, you know, makes all of the scheduling and the late nights and early mornings worth it. Yeah, I'll give you an opportunity after the break to speak to your voters as mm -hmm. well, to the voters out there. Um, don't forget to register. Yes, don't forget to register. <laughs> we need more. We need more people to get in there and be a part of that political process, no mm -hmm. doubt. But is there anything else that you want to make sure that the voters do get to know about your plans for Congress? Well, I want them to know that I will be a tireless advocate for the people of Guam. Like I said, mm -hmm. this has been my life's work to serve in this capacity as a senator, before that as a legislative staffer, as a congressional staffer, as a volunteer in so many organizations. I've always felt that has been my calling. And in this new role that I'm stepping into, hopefully stepping into, that I'm prepared for, mm -hmm. I hope that they will continue to give me that trust and confidence as they've done over the last three elections to give me the honor to serve them in this capacity. Yeah, because it's not it, <laughs> sure the campaign trail has already been pretty challenging. Yes, on, on yes. It, its own right. Yeah, but you've seen it. I'm, I'm <laughs> seeing it. I'm witnessing it. So hang in there. Yeah, thanks, Nick. <laughs> All right, we're going to take another break and okay. then we'll wrap up the show. More of the interview after this. <laughs> Only Pizza Hut lets you surround your favorite pizza with greatness. The one and only stuffed crust pizza tempts your taste buds with melted cheese stuffed inside that amazing crust. And at just $18.99 with one topping, the stuffed crust pizza is truly irresistible. So grab your slice of pizza perfection with cheesy goodness baked right into the crust. The stuffed crust pizza, just $18.99 with one topping. Only at Pizza Hut, the island's best. Welcome back to the interview. Again, we are joined by candidate for Guam delegate under the Democratic ticket, Senator Amanda Shelton. Yes, half a day, Nick. Uh, August 3rd is pretty much tomorrow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just a couple months away. <laughs> yeah, but we're ready. I know I spoke with some of the other candidates on the ticket as well, and they, they're just as excited as, as you are here. But earlier in the show, you did mention uh, your platform, and at the top of that list was the military buildup in your current capacity and then moving forward should you get the seat in DC what are some of the immediate and tangible things that you can attain for Guam with regard to the military buildup and making sure that the people's voices are truly heard mm -hmm. well for me the overarching theme of my platform is really parity for the people of Guam so when it comes to the buildup it means that Guam has a seat at the table yeah. it means that Guam knows what's going on uh, when I give career day presentations for students, I always talk about how 
uh, being an elected official means that you need to be a communicator to your constituency. You need to let them know what's happening, what's the work that you're doing, and how you're accomplishing what you're doing and what they elected you to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not to liken myself to you as a news <laughs> reporter, but I do feel that I have a responsibility to report back to the people of Guam every step of the way. Whatever meeting that is to bring Guam to the table, whatever that is, every ask that I'm going after to ensure that Guam has the hardened infrastructure, not just inside the base, to ensure that we have, you know, a presence, a forward presence to, to secure the island and mm -hmm. the nation, but also thinking about our people who are living Go, living the same lives as the people inside the base. So making sure that infrastructure is equal and bringing parity to the people of Guam. I think that's one of the, the most important things that we can do. I think we can also really focus on that workforce development aspect because as the growth is going on outside, the population is not only going to increase inside the base, yeah. right? It's it going is, to be outside growing. the base and we need to continue that workforce development. So I've done that over the past several terms in the legislature, increasing the manpower development fund to the Guam Community College mm -hmm. for for training and for uh, boot camps all of these different things for apprenticeships and we've done it to support different industries uh, around the island through the uh, apprenticeship program we just passed a bill a couple of months ago to to secure that uh, funding and to secure that credit for all of these businesses who are building up the workforce by providing on the job training. Mm -hmm. So I think that is another focus that if we can get our local workforce trained up, skilled up to be able to provide this service, and if that's not meeting the needs to bring in more uh, workforce here to help not just inside the base, but outside the base, uh, something absolutely uh, vital to the growth of our entire island. And the growing population too only uh shows the demand for more sustainable living and, mm -hmm. and that is among your list as well for your platform. Talk to us about that if you can. Yes, so in the legislature a lot of my focus especially early on was thinking about the sustainability of our island and what that meant for future generations. So mm -hmm. I know that uh, as younger people we feel like okay we want to make sure that this island in this world is here for generations to come and that's something that i think very heavily about because because i know that i want to leave guam and the and the world a better place than i received it and so we were so so blessed to pass the renewable energy legislation to ensure that guam has 100 percent renewable energy mm -hmm. by 2045 mm -hmm. and i think one of the things that i can do as delegate is to ensure that we are following those benchmarks we're bringing in federal resources to help us achieve those goals and i'm really excited to hear that gpa is on track to do that mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that you know the work stops we have to watch it every step of the way we have to follow it up we have to go along with the process because the leaders will change out over time and so it's incumbent upon us to do what we can and so as a leader if I'm fortunate enough to be the delegate mm -hmm. I will continue to fight for those federal resources to make that mandate a reality nice um, so now is your opportunity to speak to the voters uh, you can look into your camera right over here and just go ahead and address them. Okay. Well, Guam, we are experiencing unprecedented growth today. And largely it is fueled by the U.S. military buildup and our relationship with them experiencing everything on Guam, our growing pains. And I think that what we need to focus on is the people of Guam. Something that I think about often is a sentiment shared uh, in a briefing by our Adjutant General of the National Guard, our former Lieutenant Governor, Dr. Mike Cruz, who talks about what he shares with military officials, men and women, the top brass in Washington, and that is what is at stake for the people of Guam in the weeks, months, decades ahead, and that is uh, in addition to fortifying the island, to building us up and preserving Guam as a military base, we also need to preserve our culture, our traditions, our special uniqueness that makes us who we are. Because we are people of Guam, rooted here, and rooted here 
knowing that we will be here for generations to come. My campaign, my work as a senator, as your senator over the last six years has always kept that in mind, that I am working for my generation and future generations to come to leave Guam better than we inherited it, to leave Guam as a special and unique place that puts the people of Guam and the hearts of the people of Guam at the forefront. And I thank you so much for the honor of your confidence, your support of me over the last six years to be your advocate in the legislature. And I once again ask for your support and your confidence in this new role to be your congressional delegate. Thank you very much, Guam. Siduas Masi, if you are not registered to vote, please register. It's so easy. You can do it online at the Guam Election Commission's website. You can do it in office. There are so many ways to do it, but please register to vote. And on August 3rd, I humbly ask for your vote for Guam's delegate to Congress, Sidious Masi. Sidious Masi, Senator Amanda Shelton, again, candidate for Guam delegate under the Democratic ticket. We'll see you on the ballot on yeah. August 3rd, and good luck to you and the rest of the candidates. This won't be the last we'll be hearing from her as well so ahead of the primary. So again, all the best, and thank you for the time. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us for the interview. Find out what happens next on the campaign trail when, we, when the uh, interview returns later. For now, I'm Nick Delgado. Stay safe, everyone.